Today we're going to be talking about the nine things you need to know before buying the Thames and Cosmos hydraulic boxing box kit. That was harder to say than I thought it was. Number one, the advertised three hour build per boxer is completely accurate. You are going to need to set aside a significant chunk of your day to build these with your kids or yourself if they're for you. Not a lot. It says build times may vary. For the first bot that my son put together, it was pretty close to three hours. The second bot we were able to finish much faster. So if you're considering buying these bots, know that it's not an insignificant time commitment putting these things together. The second thing you need to know is once you're finished putting them together, they work pretty well. Not only do they work pretty well, is they're configurable. You can configure it for a jab. You can configure it for an uppercut. You can have them both do uppercuts, both do jabs. I especially like the fact using the hydraulic mechanism, which is the point of the kit, your guy I can bob and weave back and forth using the joystick. Man, you should have been bobbing and weaving. Look at you. The best thing about these kits is how well they perform once they're assembled. They do exactly as advertised. Number three, the third thing you need to know is if the best thing about these things is how well they are when they are put together, the worst thing about these things is the building process. This process is painful. You don't need a lot of supplies. In fact, all you really need is a couple of narrow clippers, but these plastic sheets of tools are absolutely the worst to deal with. And I should have known about these sheets. These are the exact same sheets and parts that we had to deal with when we bought the Cyborg hand. And I put this together hmm, about a year ago. Well, at least it still works. But these plastic sheets are a pain. One, they're small. You have to cut each one out manually. The biggest issue is the pieces are numbered for convenience, which is great, but the numbers seem to just be scattered all over the chart and the numbers are also repeated. So some steps you're looking for piece number seven, you find it only to find out that 20 steps later, you might be looking for another part that's also labeled seven. It's weird why they would use duplicate numbers. It makes absolutely no sense and not only do they use duplicate numbers in some of these piece sheets these numbers are so small i'm getting old i can't see that small a couple of times i cut out the wrong one having to set it aside only to remember that was a different piece so i wasn't trying to think that we were missing a piece because i cut out the wrong one from earlier the best part is when they're built they work like they're supposed to the worst part the building process is painful before I get to the fourth thing, know that I'm going to be comparing this box kit to what I consider to be the best Thames and Cosmos kit of all time, which is the physics workshop. I reviewed it already. I would recommend to go look at the video, but it's one of our very first videos here and it's painful to watch. The physics kit, perfection from Thames and Cosmos for a number of reasons. So with the physics kits is a 10 on one end of the spectrum. The piece of garbage wind power kit is a zero on the other end of the spectrum. I would say go look at that video. That video is not actually that bad, but this product is such a waste of time. Don't waste your money. And as I said, at the end of the video, I'll tell you where this falls in the line of quality products from Thames and Cosmos. The fourth thing you need to know about it, if you've watched my previous videos, you know I'm a big fan of the booklet. Sometimes Thames and Cosmos knocks it out of the park with an excellent booklet with a bunch of educational content. The manual that comes with this one, oh boy. Not great. It's advertised as being 40 pages long. The problem is among these 40 pages, it's all instructions. There's very few actual science in here. And to make the point about science, it advertises four experiments. But I've gone through this instruction booklet many times and I see experiment one and experiment two. There's no experiment three and four. And again, I really feel like I'm missing something. It's not there. Are we supposed to do the experiments twice? I'm not gonna call them out for false advertisement, but this booklet, Thames and Cosmos, is woefully inadequate if you're trying to make this an educational product. The fifth thing you need to know is once it is assembled, Yes, it is fun. My son has had a lot of fun playing with it. It comes with scorecards. I can't really say that the trouble building it is worth it, but once it was done, we have had a lot of fun with it. Okay, tip number, I've lost count. Is it six, seven? I don't know. The next thing you need to know is the customer service for Thames and Cosmos is actually pretty good. Because of how tiny the parts are and how confusing it can be looking at some of the numbers, I actually cut off one of the end pieces of the piston th thinking it was one of the burrs that I was supposed to remove, which completely ruined the piece. Without the piston, this thing is useless. But the customer service came in. I emailed them within 24 hours, I got a response. I responded to that response telling them what I needed. And within 24 hours from that, they told me they were gonna send 
the piece to my house. They didn't ask for a receipt. They didn't ask for a proof of purchase. They said it was going to be free. It's in the mail. So it is nice knowing that with this product, and I'm assuming any Thames and Cosmos product you buy, if you have an issue, they have a very responsive customer service team waiting to help you. And maybe whoever's on the customer service team, perhaps you can replace the booklet making team because whew, this one is bad. Did I mention that already? The next thing you should know is the build quality of these bots actually seems a little bit better than the cyborg hand. Even though this is bigger, the pieces are bigger, it feels stronger. I'm not sure which one came out first. There's a few extra things they did to make this a little bit more secure. For example, where your hydraulic tubes connect to the piston, you have these securing bolts in here that aren't present on the cyborg hand. Now we never had any of these tubes pop off, but I guess they did because they've been included on this. Also on the cyborg hand, this tube right here just kind of floats in space. Whereas here on the box, they've included the clamps here that keeps them all nice and together and makes fighting a little bit more efficient. All in all, between the two, the assembly of both of them is quite painful, but this one just seems slightly more polished. And additionally, the experiments are incredibly brief. Experiment number one just deals with the compressibility of air and experiment number two deals with the lack of compressibility of liquids, but they don't even go into an explanation as to why air is compressible and why liquids aren't as compressible. It's kind of an important point, unless I missed it, but I don't think I did. In the end, I don't really know if this is a toy or an educational product. If it's a toy, no parent is going to get this to their kids knowing that they're committing themselves to an entire day of just building it and with an incredibly frustrating assembly process. If it's an educational product, it's woefully inadequate from an education standpoint. It's not a great educational product. It's not a great toy. It just kind of falls in the middle. I hope this video helps you subscribe and I'll see you next time.